Hey everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of the GVG Cast, where we hang out, chat with all of you, and see what's been happening over the past week. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined by my good friend and GVG co-founder, uh, co-partner, Ash Polson. How you doing, Ash? And I am good. Great to hear. And in the background, once again, helping us out, being the rock of the team once again, Daniel Alba. Not talking at the moment, but he is there handling the stream since... Uh, my computer still can't do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, right. yes, applause all around. I love to hear it. Uh, so, yeah, um, how have we been? And actually, actually, what we should do before this, all, before anything goes on, just so I don't forget it, uh, we got our patron birthday shout outs. And it's a special one because, well, not a, not a special, special one or anything They're like that. Special. That you're special. That's the. That's a trap right there to get into. Is like yes, yeah, <laughs> no. It's just fun because it actually is their birthday today. It's not like we didn't miss it. It's not coming up in a few days. It's not like the past few is like not we missed it by a day or something like that. No, it's today right now with Town Darling. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, Town Darling. I hope you're having a great one. We're having a time about town. <laughs> so yeah. Like I feel like there's uh, but, a joke there. There's, not, there's either a joke there or in the fact that this is episode 111. I don't know where the joke is, but I don't know. It's episode 111. I don't know. There's got to be something there, right? Yeah, I, you'd think, but I, I honestly, I'm, I'm, my dad jokes are failing me. So right. <laughs> I, got, I got nothing. I got nothing. Um, but yeah, uh, how have you been, Ash? Unfortunately, we've had some uh, trouble <laughs> getting to in the show lately. Yeah, I know. It's just it's been a little difficult because Steve and Brandon are now, you know, they're doing their own podcast, The Win, which has been very successful and we were super happy for them to be doing it. But it also means that Steve isn't usually available uh, for GVG cast. And Brandon, you know, understandably doesn't always feel like doing two podcasts in one day. Completely respect that. So uh, it kind of narrows the field a little bit, uh, you know, and we know that our audience still loves GVG cast. So we, we were going to keep doing it, but it does make it a little bit harder to make sure we're able to do it every week. And, uh, you know, super thankful to Daniel for running the show in the background while his voice still recovers. Uh, once I can be, I, I just need kind of a, like a tech sit down with Steve or Daniel to get all of the assets. And then I can start trying to run the show as well. Not trying to, I can start running it. Uh, I just need to get some practice and get all the current show assets. And I know it's difficult for you, Derek, because your PC is just not, not doing look it at right episode now. 100 <laughs> yeah i remember that was oh that's God, all was i can wild. say just look at episode 100 and yeah. i might every time i try to use discord in the app itself it does that now if i try to use what i use right now which is the um online version of discord which i completely forgot about at the time it still lags and is not quite there which is frustrating because right. it's so close it's like if it just that's works so even a little bit better. I'd be solid to go, but it's just not happening, which is weird because every other function on my computer is fine. It's just it's Discord, so and I've uninstalled yeah. and reinstalled so many times. That's Nothing. so strange that it just it is like a flip, a switch flipped and and a, per a proverbial switch flipped, and it just went from working properly to not. It's so weird. Yeah, I I don't get it. I really yeah. don't get it, but. Hey, and happier news. Uh, what have you been up to? What have you been playing? Oh, man, what have I been up to? Well, uh, first of all, thank you for hosting today. I've, I've got quite the headache going on, and I didn't sleep too well last night, so I, my energy's a little bit lower than usual, so I really appreciate you taking over hosting this week. Uh, but uh, I've been playing, uh, well, of course, I'm still chipping away at Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door, and I'm at the very, very end, so I basically just have to go finish it. Uh, and that's, of course, been an awesome experience. Um, but I've also started up a new playthrough, and, you know, who knows how many months or years it'll take me to finish it at the rate I'm going, but I actually have started up a new playthrough of Octopath Traveler 2 just because it is so freaking good, and I really regretted dropping it. And I didn't drop it for any other reason than there was just too much coming out, like, you know, Tears of the Kingdom and all this other stuff coming out that, you know, got my priorities. But, like, Octopath 2 is so freaking good, and... uh I thought about starting up from my, my previous save, but it had been like a year and I felt like I didn't really remember the layout That's of the world tough. and everything. So I decided to start fresh. Uh, I'm going through my fifth character's chapter one right now, and I'm just playing it bits and pieces here and there. Um, you know, it's, I, I unfortunately 
and fortunately have it on PS5, which is great because it's a really buttery smooth 60 FPS. On the other hand, though, I can't play it on the go because I don't have it on Switch. So it's going to be a long time before I finish it, but it's such a good game. Uh, and then I also have uh, played the demo of Visions of Mana or Mana, how they Ooh, apparently like to say Mana to check in the West. I haven't had the chance to check that out yet. How is it? You know, I'm I'm a little oh, bit no. mixed on it. Well, it it's not bad. <laughs> a, it's not yeah. a bad sign. It's like you know. <laughs> well, because you know me, I'm a big mana fan, and, and and they do say it's officially mana in the West, but I think that sounds stupid. So I'm going to say mana. Um, it it I really enjoy the Trials of Mana remake. I really liked it, but the combat in Visions just doesn't feel as punchy. I guess that like hits feel kind of weak, and and even regular enemies are a little bit too bull, uh, bullet spongy, HP spongy. And but then again, though, it, it looks beautiful. It looks exactly like you'd want a modern mono game to look like. But then again, the, the soundtrack is surprisingly just fine. It's just it doesn't really stand out in the way that you think a mono soundtrack normally should, uh, especially because the original composer, uh, Hiroki Kikuta, is supervising. So I was like, this is going to be a slam dunk soundtrack. But again, it's just a demo. It's just one main major area uh, or I guess two major areas. So it's too early to say yet, but. It's not, it, it didn't hit me the way I hoped it would. It's, it's, I still want to play it, but it's not something that I'm like, oh my God, I got to play this day zero. Like, I, I still right. like it, but it's just, it definitely was knocked down a few pegs for me. But I'm still, I'm still on the, on the, on the Visions bandwagon, just maybe not quite as much. Yeah, that's, that's, that's fair. That's fair. Um, as far as me, I, I haven't really been able to play much else uh, besides what I stream and uh, Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> that's, of course. One of those things. Fourteen has just sort of uh, sucked it up quite a bit there. I, I finished the the expansion, uh, which was a lot of fun. I'd probably it's probably my third favorite expansion at this point. Um, it's a it's a new story, so it's hard to you know compare to the you know you have you compare an epic finale, epic build up for the, right. the previous arc. And you got the start of a brand new arc, which is fun, but maybe not quite hitting the way that those other ones did just because you don't have all that build up towards it. But, you know, as a, as a, as a standalone story goes, it's it's quite good. Definitely enjoyed my time um, playing through it. And I'm in the um, post uh, post game stuff uh, right now where it's uh, you've got. So there are these uh, trials that uh, happen and the way they have it set up this time mm. is. Basically, like a fighting game, you're going through a tournament arc and working your way up to like uh, the like the heavyweight classes, essentially, right. in order to take on these bosses that are basically have wrestling personas, but they also are able to combine with animals, uh, monster oh. spirits in a lot of ways. Okay. And so the designs are really reminding me of Bloody Roar. <laughs> wow, that's a deep cut. Yeah, it really okay. feels like oh, it's it's like oh, it's 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 wrestling combined with bloody roar. Sure, why not? And yeah, very very catchy uh, music. But it's 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 been fun there. It's just it's a nice chance for me and Amy to play together uh, in the same way that you and um, Basola enjoy uh, Ace Attorney. Um, right. So there's there's that whole thing. Uh, and there's and with us caught up. It's just a matter of like oh hey, we can actually check out all this stuff we had to rush past before because we were trying to. E content current now we actually get to wait with everybody whenever a new um piece of uh, a new update comes out nice so you know that's 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 definitely different um otherwise uh it's a funny thing last saturday i attempted to finally go to the movies for the first time since godzilla minus one because i oh, wanted okay. to try to see i i wanted to try to see uh dead deadpool and wolverine because that's just the type of movie like, OK, I don't want to miss oh, yeah. out on the cameos because I already had I still haven't seen the movie, but I definitely oh. had all the cameos or all the the, the, the twists spoiled for me for uh, the, the Spider-Man oh, no. no Way Home. Oh, 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 for Spider-Man. OK, OK. Yeah, for Spider-Man No Way Home. But um, I was like, OK, let's let's let's. I, no, no spoilers because spoiler. Well, spoiler. I have not seen it yet because I went to the local theater, which does have the whole like call ahead and get you reserved seating type thing. But I didn't bother because it's already been two weeks or something like that since the movie had come out. And so I just go because I wasn't sure if I was going to go or not. I was trying to decide whether or not. And um, I get there. There's one seat available. Oh, no. <laughs> in the very front. Oh, and yes, I'm like, you don't want to do that. I'm like, nope. Um. I'm going to try not, again later. Yeah. So 
maybe tomorrow I'll actually reserve a seat and try to see it. Uh, and unfortunately, in that week, uh, people have been a lot more loose-lipped, and even the marketing has been a lot more loose-lipped. The news story has been more loose-lipped about the cameos in the movie. So I'm like, dang it. Yeah. Well, I, I will say, and of course, I wouldn't dream of spoiling anything, but I did, um, uh, Bissell and I did see it last night. And uh, it was so fun. It's, it is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I, I think it's fun regardless of if you've seen the other Deadpool movies or other, uh, you know, X-Men movies or MCU movies. But if you're one of those people who has seen, like, every MCU movie, all the Fox X-Men movies, both Deadpools, if you're one of those people who knows the really small minutia of what they're doing in Deadpool and Wolverine, it is so rewarding. It is so incredibly rewarding. So look forward to it. You're going to have a great time and you made the right call. Not, you know, not settling for st sitting right in the front and having to look up. It's just, it's too good for that. So I, you I've, made the right I've call. done that before. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's not fun. And uh, you're going to have a great time when you go. It is fantastically fun. Uh, and then I, I'm super, we're, we're really super behind on movies in general. And, and we haven't really been to a movie in months uh, before mm -hmm. Deadpool and Wolverine. And one of the reasons is because of my wife's knee and healing and everything. But I think we're going to try to go see Inside Out 2 either tonight or this weekend. That's the other oh, movie that nice. we're like really... I've heard really good things. Amy Me actually too. took the kids to see that because it's been a while since she got into the movies. So it's like, I'll mm -hmm. watch Kai. You go to the movie with the, kid, the kids, uh, the rest of the kids. And they had a good time. They had a really good time with that one. Nice. I've heard really good things. And then the other thing, it's not quite as high a priority, but I'm a big Nicolas Cage fan and a big horror fan. And I've been hearing really good things about long legs. And so I hope mm. to be able to go see that sometime soon as well uh, and, and actually make use of the AMC passes that we have. I, I've I, uh, Nicolas Cage has been putting out a ton of those movies lately, but the one that caught my eye that I kind of wish I could see and I missed out on was the sort of him in a, like a five nights at Freddy's esque movie, except it's not five nights. At, oh. Willie's Wonderland. Thank you. Uh, oh, Caitlin. That's okay. exactly what I was thinking of. I heard um, it. uh, it's, it's basically uh five nights at Freddy's except um, Nicholas Cage's character is a mute badass. <laughs> oh, okay. I hadn't, I hadn't heard of it. I'll have to look into that. Yeah. Willie's Wonderland. Yeah. I completely cool. forgot. Um, yeah. Uh. <laughs> that's, that's, that's something else. Cool, Sebastian. I did see Renfield. I watched it on a plane flight, and it was so fun. He's so hammy in that movie, and I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, and Dino Cole Zeta, I have to agree. Uh, or, sorry, I have to disagree. First Class was really good, but I thought X-Men 2, like X2 and Days of Future Past. Days of Future Past is actually my favorite X-Men movie, so I can't, I can't agree that they haven't nailed it outside of First Class. Yeah. yeah I, I, I agree with that. Well, yeah, the other thing I should mention, since I was going to talk about this last week, um, but I, I so for a long time, I've gotten comments about this, but I've never acknowledged them in videos because I didn't want to draw more attention to it. But I can finally draw attention to it okay. because it doesn't matter anymore, <laughs> because uh, thanks to my uh, mom, I, I have brand new glasses. Oh, I got an eye, eye doctor checkup for the first time in four years. Got picked up new glasses. I'm all set. Like it's all it's, it's so good, which is really nice because uh, my old pair of glasses, uh, due to an accident, have been messed up for a long time to the point where this is what I was dealing with for over oh, a year. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah, these things did not want to stay on my in, on my head. They were uneven as all get out. And I just had to not acknowledge it mm -hmm. uh, for as long as I could because I didn't want to draw attention. Because if, if people didn't notice, you don't want to bring it. You just, like you don't right. want to point it out. Right. Um. So I uh, I finally got those new glasses. So thanks to mom there. Thank goodness. Um. <laughs> that's that's that was a relief to finally have that all fixed. Uh. I've been wearing my glasses a lot more. I, I have contacts and I, and I used to like default to wearing contacts, but it's just so much easier to just wear my glasses. And That's where my I wife was. thinks I, I look good in them. And I'm so I'm just like, uh, whatever. Yeah. I used to wear contacts all the time, but, uh, I, I was, had really bad habits with my contacts where oh, really? I wouldn't take them out at night. Cause I'd want to be doing, I'd be doing something in bed and like, yeah. oh, I'm already comfortable in bed. I don't want to take him out. So I just sleep in him. Yeah. And that's, you never want to do that with contacts. 
and I did it for a long time and it got to the point where my eyes were starting to get really red and it's like, yeah, like, mm, I should probably stop this. Yeah. So. so and it's just and it's just it's so much easier and more convenient to you know maybe one day you know if I can afford it maybe I'll consider LASIK but I've heard horror stories where people like can no longer drive at night because they get like light like bleeding light oh. syndrome where like every every light appears as like a big splotchy mess and I'd love driving and I'm a night person so like it would totally wreck me if I couldn't drive what? at night anymore. All I can say is my youngest sister got LASIK or at least laser eye surgery. I'm not sure if it's specifically LASIK. Oh, okay. Um, she's fine. She loves it. She's I've heard a lot of great things. So I have. happy. <laughs> yeah. So I, I might end up doing it. It just seems a little, you it's, know, once it's you the do hor- it, you it's the, back. But yeah. yeah, it's the horror stories of it not working fully that make you a little mm, yeah. unsure. Yeah, exactly. But it would be nice not to have to wear glasses and just be able to see really well, because without my glasses or contacts, I'm almost legally blind. Not quite there, yeah. but I'm almost <laughs> legally blind. Yeah, I, my glasses are so, used to be so thick until they got the technology improved that it made it a bit thinner. But right. My God, they are so thick. Yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I hear that. Oh, goodness. Um, but. Uh, would oh, you like way, a little bit of. Oh, go ahead. Uh, thank you to all. The, I've, se- I've seen a few compliments on my shirt. Thank you very much. This is one of my favorite shirts. Parappa, oh, nice. I'm Jammer Lammy. You can never go wrong. So, yes, thank you for the compliments. Absolutely. Uh, the um, <laughs> I, I guess what well, the other thing I should say, uh, this update since the last time we talked is I'm up to um, uh, Mega Man 5. I was going to ask Man where Man you Man were Man. in your playthroughs. OK, it's cool. Yes. So the week before was uh Mega Man 2 on Game Boy which mm. <laughs> yeah music not great but honestly shot is better than I thought it was going to be it's, but also it's janky, shockingly but easy yeah very shockingly easy game and also, and of, funniest wily final fight ever <laughs> it's so the, the final fight is so stupid and and of all the Mega Man killers Quint is easily just the most ridiculous like like the, the other Mega Man killers are cool but Quint literally being future Mega Man, and all he can do is the Sakugarne pogo stick thing? It's so stupid. Like, what were they thinking? You have this cool plot idea in an evil Mega Man from the future, but he's on a pogo stick, and it does nothing. <laughs> like, what were they thinking with Quint? I don't get it. I, I don't know. Why yeah. pogo stick? No wonder they kept it translated as Sakugarne. <laughs> it's so, yeah. I don't even know what Sakugarne means in Japanese, but it's like, they, it's like nah, we gotta keep this untranslated. They, they um, just, I can't believe they fumbled the ball so badly on the idea of an evil future Mega Man. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. how do you do that? But, uh, but so you played then you played Mega Man four and now you're on five. Yeah. Well, I played, yeah, I played four. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I played two Game Boy. Right. And after two Game Boy, since I beat it in an hour, I played Mega Man three DOS. Oh no. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I have a, I, I don't want to say too much. Because I, there is a video coming out next week. Uh, it's not the same as the other Mega Man videos. It's part of something else. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, oh, if you want to hear me rant. Uh, oh, 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 yeah. oh. I'll just put it this way. Mega Man X6, X7 are going to have to work <laughs> hard to be worse oh, they than will. that game. Oh, they will. I, Don't I, worry. I cannot imagine it, man. I cannot imagine it. That was one of the most frustrating experiences yeah. of my life. The only saving grace of it is it's a little bit shorter, but it mm. is crap. I mean, that's fair. I mean, to bottom. X6 and X7 are really, really terrible trash tier games, but Mega Man 3 DOS is as well. So I'm not going to stay here. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, yeah, no, X6 and X7 are easily worse, but I think they're in the ballpark. Yeah. I I'm, think they're in the ballpark. Mm. Well, what did you think of 4? Uh, four, believe it or not, as late, as far um, like, cause I've been keeping a ranking of what, what I think of each of them as I go along, mm. uh, believe it or not, four is actually my favorite so far. Interesting. Okay. Four yeah. is actually it, on the lower end of my list for I, I, four. Never. See, I like it, but I don't love see, it. I've, I've been trying to, uh, uh, look at them individually. So mm-hmm. rather than like up oh, another year, another Mega Man following the same sure. formula, like what does this one bring to the table? What is this one like? Mm-hmm. And I, gradually, I generally I found that all the at least the mainline Mega Man games just keep getting better. Like two sure. is better than one, three mm-hmm. is slightly better than two, four completes the package, gets rid of the dock robots, makes it just 
better in general. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it, it just, I just, I just really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. But then I got the five, which I know is your favorite. It is, yeah, but it's not a popular favorite. People who love it, five really love it, but it's not a widely picked favorite. I, I, I went into that just trying to, just trying to find that appreciation. Okay, what does Ash see in this? And I, I discovered the best thing about Mega Man Five to me mm. is the stages. The stage the design stages in this in this game and the graphics mm. are phenomenal compared mm-hmm. to what's come before. And I it love the, the soundtrack too. I think Five has one of the best soundtracks in the series. Um, the soundtrack didn't stand out as really? much to me other than Wily Castle One. Wily, oh, okay. Wily Castle One was great. Okay, yeah, so that's that's definitely one of my favorite. They songs were good, but it also just sort of okay blended into the background a bit as far as songs go. I think my main issue, I mean, I so I certainly admit Mega Man Five is far from perfect, even if it is my favorite. I think the worst thing about it probably is the special weapons. It's, it's probably one of the worst lineups of special weapons in the series. I could not on find the, use out yeah. of, outside of the Star Crash. <laughs> on the other hand, though, I really love the Super Mega Buster. It's so OP, it's and so I love broken. that the charge shot is like as tall as Mega Man is. He just Mega Man feels so strong, like in five compared to like four and and three and i just so supercharged that. yeah like his <laughs> it, the super mega buster is and you really don't need to use anything else for most no. of the game it's just ridiculously op but i kind of like that about it so yeah that that is the fun of it like it's, mm-hmm. it's like if it wasn't op and you had to deal with the weapons i think it'd be a horror game for it yeah but it's i'd still now this is this is where i get this is where i get in trouble is that as far as i, I can't remember the exact ranking but I think I still put five ahead of two and I oh, might okay. still put five yeah. ahead of three. I can't remember. I, I can't remember okay. offhand mm-hmm. because I think five is still feels like a complete Mega Man experience. You still have like, I, mm-hmm. I think the robot master designs are great. Mm-hmm. Oh, they the are. Robot master the gravity man are rules. Really I good. love gravity man. Yeah. Yeah. It's just unfortunate that the weapons are kind of crap, mm-hmm. but the, the designs across the board throughout the game is are really good. Like yeah. there's some really fun levels here. It's just the weapon designs is what holds it back for me. Right. Um, and I got I, you. it keeps four ahead and in, in, in general. Um, also I, I find like it's the dark, the dark men are a little too similar to each other. Like I know they're going for a theme, but it's not, and they change up a little bit, but it wasn't quite enough to change it up. And there wasn't enough. There wasn't a lot of, new uh, things to keep it different this time around that basically was the better mega buster and beat and beats dark, great but the dark man castle theme though dude it's so good that's, yeah that's good that's good oh, that's so I, good don't disagree <laughs> <laughs> i but i'm looking um, forward to seeing what how you feel about six and se- especially seven well, seven is yeah. yeah seven on reevaluation will be interesting i can yeah. tell you right now that six is my favorite classic mega man Six is really good. It's um, aged so, super well. Yeah. I'm, I, it's going to be fun to go back to that one, but there's going to be some bias there. I, I, I can't help mm-hmm. the bias. Like For sure. I just, every time I played it, just like, yeah, this is the best. <laughs> Honestly, a six is definitely in the, in the top half of my ranking, like five, seven, and six, all of them are, are in the top half, at least of my, of my ranking. If not the top fourth of it, I just, I, I think five, six, and seven, honestly, are the best it's like the best set of three Mega Man games, not trilogy since they're not a trilogy, but you know what I mean? It's like of any three adjacent Mega Man classic games, I think five, six, and seven are the best. Yeah, that's fair. (laughs) Seven, seven took a a long time for people to come around one. Mm -hmm. Um, It's, it's really, I I don't know. I think it's unfairly maligned. I think seven, it has some of the best animation on the super Nintendo period. Like the, the bosses and the enemies are so well animated and the sprites are so, striking and and well designed and detailed and i just and the backgrounds are colorful and look great i just, I just love Mega Man 7 i i have a soft spot like i know it's not the best but i have a soft spot in my heart for Mega Man 8 just because you know, it is so pretty i i used to like talk about it in, in a negative sense like oh yeah eight's one of the worst it's not very good but then i i came around on it a few years ago and i actually now really enjoy it for what it does differently it's it's a flawed game for sure but I straight up like eight now. Like it's, it's, mm. I think it's, re- it's really good at what it specifically does. Even if the movement feels a bit slower and a little different, but man, it's so beautifully animated. Like you were saying. And, and uh, it, I, I like the bolt system, how you can buy permanent upgrades for Mega Man. And if you get a certain combination of upgrades for Mega Man, his buster 
it is insane in that game. It's like rapid fire. He just mauls through everything in the game if you upgrade his buster in a certain way. It's super cool. Uh, that's awesome. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. But that one's surprisingly far off for me. <laughs> like, yeah. As far as like, like my my next game. I don't, I'm not want to uh, stay on this topic for too long, but I believe sure. my next game is Mega Man Three Game Boy. Okay. Uh, and nice. And then the very first Mega Man spinoff. Wily and Light, no rock board. Oh. That, that's paradise. So oh, yeah. Mega Man Monopoly, essentially. The uh, uh, Mega Man World 3 is when the Game Boy games start getting really good. Like they just get Looking they just start them. getting better and better from, from three. Like four and five, in my opinion, are two of the best classic Mega Man games ever, period. And three is really it's really good, too. Yeah. And yeah. I have a I have a honestly, like ever since I got through uh, DOS three DOS, I'm like, I'm in I have a good lineup here because it's like five three game boy oh, uh yeah. mega man monopoly mega man four game boy mega man six mega man x oh man the like, best like back to back the goat the goat yeah and then mega man soccer and then mega man five game boy <laughs> uh-huh. but i've never played mega man soccer i know that is uh limited it, it's not <laughs> great but it is a thing that exists i'll just yes, i'll say indeed. that much <laughs> Uh, well, speaking of X, uh, uh, I think you want to gush about something, (laughs) Ash, because, uh, I believe uh, tonight sometime, or I I don't know exactly what it is, but, uh, Maximilian dude and his team working on the mod pro the modding project for Mega uh, for, um, Marvel versus Capcom infinite and beyond, are going to be showing off what they've done over the past, what is it, month? month? Uh, I forget how long it's been now. I think it's like been four or five months, really. They've four been or five months. They yeah. finally showed X, though. Oh, my God. I, I knew you were waiting for this. I've been waiting. They showed off quite a few other characters before X, and I've just been waiting to see X in this striking new art style. And hats off, by the way, to Max Dude and his team. They are doing God's work on Infinite and, and, and in terms of fixing its art style and making it a better game. Because uh, I thought I thought I actually always thought Infinite was pretty good mechanically, but man, was it ugly! Oh my, and it had such terrible marketing. Man, was it ugly! But the way they're giving this this game a glow up, and I finally gotten to see the first look at X, and he looks perfect. It's insane. I I just uh, posted in in live audience chat. He looks perfect, and I yeah. just. I can't get these old costumes in there that look pretty great. Honestly, I really hope I know it's probably not going to happen just because of the scarf. Right. I wish command mission X was in there because I feel I feel like that's still like one of the best designs of X. It well, and that was actually a a, a costume in the original game. Yeah. So I, I I think they probably will mod like not mod. I think oh, I, I didn't will. really wasn't I never picked up Infinite, so I, didn't, I never knew it was actually a co- already existing costume. Yeah, I'll, I'll post it in live audience chat, and of course it'll also just show you how ugly <laughs> MVC Infinite was compared to what they're doing here. But no, Command Mission X was actually oh, no. a costume. At, I know, right? But imagine though how good that's going to look in the new art style, right? Yeah, for amazing. sure. Yeah. For, for so, sure. No, he looks incredible, and I could not be happier with what they're doing with this game. It just look it's it looks how this game should have always looked. It's it's a it's a step up from MVC three. I'm uh I'm I'm probably gonna pick it up on PC just to have this version because I, I uh plan to because uh my wonderful uh community at my per, my Twitch uh was supportive enough during my last subathon that they expanded the Mega Man marathon beyond just the core Mega Man games. It's now playable Mega Man cameos. So all the Marvel versus Capcom games are in there now. So that includes infinite. So nice. So that's the version I'm going to be playing. (laughs) Very cool. Very cool. And also uh, Malky or seven. Thanks for the first time chat. I too adore the battle network games. And I think Derek will probably agree once he gets around to them, except for four, I think four sucks. Never played them. So this will be interesting. And yeah, yeah, Command Mission X really is like, a, a, other than his default form and maybe the ultimate armor, uh, Command Mission X is so cool looking. I love that design so much. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Just like how uh, Zero Zero is the best yeah. Zero design. Hell yeah. I God, Which, he looks so cool in the Zero go, Series. Go to SVC Chaos for realizing that. <laughs> yep, that's true. They, that's, that's the only fighting game that Zero Series Zero has ever been playable in, and it's the only reason I played it because it's not a very good game. But man, I got pretty good with Zero for a while back in the arcade. Mm-hmm. Super fun uh, to play. 
I think I'm also going to let you um, gush about something else uh, where Sega has uploaded the track for Space Colony Arc Act 1 for Ooh. Sonic and Cross Shadow Generations. I have not listened to it because I'm just sort of keeping, you know, away of it, just mm-hmm. enjoying it on its own. So I've not really looked at the new stuff in general. But it's is it good? It's good. It's, it is pure ear sex, man. That and they uh, they also <laughs> dropped. I think two weeks ago they dropped the uh, the track for Kingdom Valley Act One, and they're Ooh. both just. I mean, yeah, you you know how good Kingdom Valley already was in Sonic 06, and just you know imagine what they're doing to it for Shadow Generations, and it's it's as good as I'm sure what whatever you're thinking in your head. And same thing with Space Colony Arc Act One. I got to hear it in the demo when I played it at Summer Game Fest, but of course hearing it without any sound effects and everything is the way to go. And, oh, man, I can't wait for this game. The soundtrack is just going to slap so hard. Oh, uh, that's... I'm excited. I'm excited. I think it's going to I think it's gonna be fun. Because I, I like Johnny Generations, and it seems like they're not touching the core game. It's just, here's a bunch yeah. of Shadow stuff. What you know, it's enough to get Sonic fans in there. So And I'm, I'm happy to replay Sonic Generations anytime. I replayed part of it on uh, with the FPS boost on Xbox Series X, but... I, you know, it, and it was definitely getting to play that at 60, 60 FPS was awesome. But playing the demo that I did at, at uh, Summer Game Fest and just playing Green Hill Act 1 and Act 2 with the glow up and the performance enhancements that it's gotten in house at Sonic Team, that's the way to go, I think. It's going to be the way to go mm-hmm. from what I can tell. It'd be really cool. It would be so minor, but it'd be really cool if they could expand the, the music selection for the main game as well. That would be nice. That, yeah. Or at least put the, sh- the new Shadow songs in there for an option just that because be- that was one of my favorite parts is re going like I did not mind red ring hunting because I could listen to new songs each time. It was a mm-hmm. lot of fun. Yeah. And, and yes, uh, Caitlin, I have, I did hear about the delisting. Yeah. Um, it's, it's unfortunate, but I feel like Sega's also found a way to kind of handle it. Okay. That at least the mods still work. Like they, I, I, yeah, uh, there's like, there's options there. It's not just like, now nah, you can't get this anymore. Right. Because they know their fans. There'd be pitchforks. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so. For sure. Um, I th- I, I'm actually. Uh, are people OK with us talking about that new Zelda Echoes of Wisdom tra- trailer? Because um, I've seen a lot of people uh, say that uh, th- this has sold them much more on the game than before. But I also know some people don't want to see anything. So oh, okay. here's yeah. your warning. Fair enough. Yeah, if you don't want us to talk about it, that's totally fine, because uh, we were going to maybe bring up the new trailer. Um, but yeah, if seems like we're getting the green light, go talk. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, here's your warning. You know, just we're going to talk about it now. <laughs> cool. Um, man, I, I was already pretty sold. I mean, it's Zelda. I'm sold anyway. But I, I definitely like until that trailer, Echoes of Wisdom was not something that was like super incredibly high in my hype meter like brothership was but now after that new trailer i'm like seeing all the creative ways you can just traverse 2d hyrule it's just it's like breath of the wild or or, uh tears of the kingdom level creativity but in a 2d context and it looks so creatively satisfying Mm -hmm. yeah it's 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 just so clever and cute and you get the different costumes and you got um like is this the first time in a 2D Zelda that we've had access to a Pona? It might be, think. actually. I'm trying to think. Well, not even a Pona, just a horse. Or just a horse, yeah. I think it might be, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, the, the only one I would think in was, yeah. the Oracle games, but that's about it. Yeah. So that's, and that's, that's cool. wild. The costumes, like you said, the fact that you can have different costumes for Zelda, I think is really neat. Especially because I don't love her default costumes, so I'll, I'll definitely be looking forward to that. Yeah, uh, da- um, Daniel points out that you can you could kind of count the four sword adventures. So you I was that, thinking maybe there was that. Horse okay. is more like an invincibility power up. So it's yeah. not quite the same. This is more about traversal, which definitely conveys that this is kind of a big high rule. This is not it's not going to be tiny. It doesn't seem like right. It, it, no, it does seem like there's so much to this game's map, even if similar parts of it are similar to a link to the past high rule. It just seems like you're looking at that, but then go back, go back to a link to the past and like in your mind, expand the map way more beyond the boundaries of the map in that game. And that's what you're getting here. Yeah. It's, it's, it's looking. I, so I like, cool. I like seeing all the races. I like seeing all the characters there. There's been a lot of um, stuff on the website, the Japanese website uh, showing that uh, we have uh, old Impa once again for this game, but 
Yeah. But also has a brother in this game. So get right. to enjoy them. They're, they're the ones, uh, they're, he's the one researching the rift. Uh, we got the King of Hyrule. He's mm-hmm. going to be in there as well. So it, it's nice to have a cast. And for the first time in a very long time, a populated Hyrule town. Right. I think Which somebody mentioned great. that this is the first time we've had a populated Hyrule town since Twilight Princess. Must be since Twilight Princess. Yeah, I think so. You see, I, I don't really yes. count. Uh, I don't really count. Technically, Spirit Tracks, since that's, but that's new Hyrule. But eh. yeah, and I don't really count Lookout Landing. Like Lookout Landing is close to where Hyrule Castle Town used to be in Tears of the Kingdom, and it feels like it could be the beginnings of a castle town, but it's not really the same thing. So yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's true. And you know, also uh, Dino Pulse Zeta made, made a good point. Uh, Epona does technically appear in the Oracle games, just in the story cuts, the intro story cutscene. True, true. So not as not as a game play, uh, a gameplay mechanic, but yeah, I I'm looking forward to this. And you know, speaking of Zelda, we just found out this week that Nintendo are going to once again be going to PAX West, and Ooh. this seems like a good time to have it playable for the first time. I'm just saying. And Daniel, Steve, and I are all going to be there. So if Nintendo's bringing Zelda and they're bringing hopefully Mario and Luigi Brothership, we will be there to deliver impressions from the show. I'm really hoping they do. Uh... So I know. <laughs> I wish you could go, <laughs> man. Uh, it's all right. It's all right. But no, yeah. it's it's cool. Like the, Nintendo definitely has stuff that they can show uh, at PAX. So and yeah, they, and, they absolutely should. And Asrin says, "Ha, good luck, Ash. They didn't even bring Princess Peach Showtime to East, and that's true. But you know what? They did bring to West last year, and we were one of the first channels to get footage of it up and impressions up. Was Super Mario Brothers Wonder? So they seem to be willing to." bring new stuff to West more than East for some reason. So I'm still crossing my fingers that there's maybe a chance we'll get at least get Zelda at the show. Yeah. And as Bolt Mouse points out, it could even be a Gamescom. That's true. Uh, I, I don't know if Nintendo is going to Gamescom, actually. I don't believe they no, no. are. I, I've not, yeah. I've not kept up with that because I'm not going to Gamescom. I'll just right. wait. I, that's one of the situations like I'll just wait till the news comes out. Right. Although I, I do know Square is going to be there. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to have there. Maybe I'll have like Dragon Quest or something. That would be really cool. Uh, be uh, to be able to play at Gamescom. Really cool. and, and I guess for those of you who don't already know, I guess I should mention, uh, John and I are both going to be going to Gamescom for the first time this year. Uh, it's it's ha- happening later this month, in a couple of weeks, actually. And so, yeah, if you're in the area of Cologne, Germany, and you're going to be at the show, would love to meet you. And I, I can't wait. I've never been to Germany, never been to Gamescom, always wanted to go. So I'm super looking forward to doing this with John. Didn't John also announce that uh, you guys have something special there? We do. Yeah, we're still working out the details, but we're going to have a like a stage where where they're giving us like an hour of like a stage in a room for an hour. And we're going to be doing a live watch that track. And and they're giving us like a whole production crew. We basically just have to show up and host the show, but they're giving us an entire production crew. It's crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. Honestly, that's a really good idea on John's part to uh, turn what's that track into a a, uh, con show. That would be so. Yeah, I I would love to be to be able to keep doing that since, you know, I go to basically every patch. I just don't know if I could produce it on my own, but I'm sure that Daniel and I together could for sure. And he tends to go to at least PAX West. So I guess I should also mention uh, I just found out today that uh, PAX is giving us the community room again for a live GVG meetup. We had the community room to ourselves for an hour and a half last year at PAX West, had a super successful meetup. And now I just got the uh, news today. I got the email that they're giving it to us again. So we will be having our own room for the community meetup this year again. Uh, so if you're going to be at PAX West, definitely, uh, you know, come to that meetup. It'll be a lot of fun. It's going to be on Saturday from 1 to 2.30. But of course, I'll, you know, post reminders on Twitter and in our Discord closer to the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, should, that should be a lot of fun. That should be a lot of fun. It's, 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 maybe next year I'll get to go to a con. Maybe. <laughs> I hope so. We'd love to have you back at PAX East, man. I still remember how much fun yeah. we did uh, doing the Streets of Rage 4 preview. Oh, that was a good time. Man, that we was were, so we were living it up on that during that preview. We were having so much fun. Oh, God, it was so fun. One of the most fun previews I've ever done. We're so good. We need a Streets of Rage 5. I know they're oh, making a 3D God. one, but we need a Streets of Rage 5. They just need to let that team do whatever they want with Streets of Rage 5 because <laughs> they'll, they'll obviously kill it. Let, let them cook. Let them cook. Exactly. Um, uh, actually, uh, one other thing that I, I so funny thing is not not too long ago, I actually played um, CrossCode. Have you ever played that? 
I played the first couple of hours of it, and I, it, I liked it, but it didn't quite grab me enough for me to keep sticking with it. And I heard it's really long, too. It is surprisingly long. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things where it, I, it, it did take a while to click with me as well. Like, I was mm-hmm. kind of into it, but it was also like, eh, not quite so sure. But... By the end, it really had me. Like it was a lot of fun. I yeah. never paid, I never played the DLC for it that sort of finished the um how do I put this? The in-game story. Like there is the Oh, sure. Okay. Since it's a MMO like game where you're in an mm-hmm. MMO, the MMO story itself was never finished. Mm-hmm. This actually finishes that and answers a few lingering questions. Um so, you know, that that's pretty cool. It's it's pretty nice and the gameplay itself was really fun with some of the trickiest bosses uh, not bosses but trickiest um dungeons out there Lot, like, lots of puzzles crap. lots of dungeon puzzles right oh my gosh they they got tricky yeah. <laughs> by the end um but they finally have a new game coming out uh alabaster dawn and oh this looks good it, <laughs> like you can see the dna of crosscode in there but it is like stepped up I see a little bit of cross code. I see a little bit of sea of stars visually. Like I love everything about what I'm seeing about this game. Like I need it now. The, this, the this is an indie game. One. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll link the trailer in uh, live audience chat for anyone who hasn't seen it yet. But this game looks thick, y'all. I need it. Mm-hmm. The combat just looks yeah. incredible. Yeah, I'd really really impressive and i i've heard um, that the, the the most divisive thing about crosscode was really between the audience who really loved the heavy puzzle focus and people who didn't love it so as someone who's not a big puzzle guy i'm kind of hoping alabaster dawn is a little less puzzle focused than crosscode was but i'm still gonna check it out either way i definitely saw puzzles in there maybe they took some lessons and turned it down but i also mm-hmm. heard that the dlc puzzles are even harder <laughs> so maybe oh, not God, no uh Please, I, I i have i have no idea on that one but still mm-hmm. exciting new indie that's always a good thing for sure yeah so um but i think otherwise uh ready to talk about some um patron topics let's do it yeah so just as a reminder if you guys support us over on our patreon at uh uh oh gosh i'm blanking on our patreon.com slash gv gaming <laughs> Thank you. There's too many variations. We've <laughs> know, had to do right? too many variations. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> but you can support us over there and you can uh, offer up topics just like these. So, Ash, why don't you go ahead and go first? What's your topic for this week? Sure. So my topic this week comes from Hendrix Trog. Uh, thank you so much. Who asked, uh, with the 2020 shaking up the social media landscape, I wanted to ask how y'all currently feel about the screenshot functionality on consoles. Has your usage of them changed since their, de- de- their, since their debut about a decade ago? And uh, this is such a very specific question, but it's something I've been thinking about lately because I used to love using the screenshot and recording uh, function on Switch and PS5 mainly. I don't play as much Xbox, but I know you can do the same thing there. But I don't use it nearly as much now because my main reason for using them was to be able to post them directly to Twitter. And now with Muskrat ruining Twitter and and making it so that Nintendo and PlayStation no longer want to pay for that access, I miss it, honestly. I do. It's something that I actually do miss being able to do. And it's something that I I don't really ever take screenshots or clips just to go back and watch them by myself. Like, I Mm -hmm. want to share them or that's it. Uh, I'll take screenshots of, like, maybe some really good scores in theater rhythm sometimes, but, like, again, I'd rather be able to share them. And yeah, I know technically there are ways to get these screenshots off, the, you know, off the consoles, and you can post them, but it's so roundabout. It's such a pain in the ass. I'm not ever going to do that, you know? So yeah. it's just one more thing that uh, Muskrat has gotten his dirty hands into and <laughs> ruined for everybody else. And it is something, I have to say, that I, I don't use at all anymore or very rarely because I can't share to socials anymore. Yeah. Um, I, 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 up until the switch, I never used the screenshot functionality. I just felt no need for it. It just didn't come across to me as something I, I like doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but there were certain times when, during, during playing switch that I'd be like, Oh yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's do this. Let's get this picture. And like, Oh, I have an, a funny idea. I can post this, uh, that sort of thing. So it, it has, um, uh come up in that way it's like oh this is this is cool um 
the only other time I had to use them was honestly during Breath of the Wild during certain puzzles. There was actually that one puzzle we had to, the, there was the one, um, uh, what the one with the two connected uh, puzzle rooms. So you had oh, to uh-huh. get one and then go to the other and then use the information of the first one with the other one and vice versa. So it was useful for that and other type of like, uh, you need to remember this code. Or you need to remember this thing. It's nice for that. Um, but actually taking memories of them. No, never really did that mm-hmm. other than posting it to um, posting it to uh, Twitter and whatnot. Yeah. Um, that being said, Amy plays Final Fantasy 14 off the PS5 and she screenshots pretty things very often. And that oh, game, yeah. like if okay. something that catches her interest because she has no interest in posting it. She just wants to have memories of it since it's, you know, technically just get to play through it once. Mm-hmm. So she wants to have those memories of certain things that happened. Nice. Um, so, yeah, it's that. apparently this is a, a couple of people's first time hearing Muskrat for uh, as, a, as a nickname for him. I'm surprised. I've been hearing it's a good it for one. years. And it's just one that I use by default now because I can't stand the guy. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah, so it, it's it's a shame. I really, you know, I, I don't. And to be very clear, I don't blame Nintendo or, or Sony at all for for disabling that feature because I don't remember the, what the numbers were, but the the prices he was charging per month oh, so for they, for it were insane. Like they were I, insane. I mean, I could go. I'm not going to get into this. I don't want to get into it whatsoever. But it's really funny me funny to me that he thinks he has to sue in order to get advertisers. It's like oh, advertisers should be paying. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, hover on that. Just no, I like, hear you though. I hear you. Um, it's just dumb. Uh, but yeah, my use I guess it changed a little bit, but nothing to any major function. I wasn't addicted to it or anything like that. I just it, it, hey, I thought of something funny. Let me share that that sort of thing. I found it. I found it. Forty two thousand dollars a month. That is yeah. what Muskrat was wanting from yeah. Nintendo and PlayStation. That is so stupid. Like, what? Why would they pay for that? Why would any any company what? pay that? That's nuts. Just absolutely oh nuts. I'm, I'm sorry. Starting at forty two thousand dollars. Oh, monthly, starting. Oh, god, yeah. that's even worse. That's so dumb. Oh man. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, thank you for that question, Hendrik Strong. Thank you uh, very much. The, very interesting there. Uh, my my question this week comes from Wataniacs asking if you all had to participate in a sport from the Olympic Games, very on point here, summer or winter, which would you go for? There's one I've always looked at as a kid and being like, I want to do that. That looks fun. Would I be any good at it? God, no. But <laughs> even just going slow, I think I'd like to do that. And that's the that's the uh, bobsled. Oh. It just looks like exciting sledding to me. I was like, yeah, I love sledding. Let's do that. That's, that, that looks like fun. But you see, um, you see uh, cool runnings in the, the crash in that, in that movie. And it's like, mm. but that's why I'd go slow. I don't need to win a medal. I just want to go down the, 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 the thing. <laughs> right. Oh God. That snowboarding is definitely up there for me. Or, uh, sorry. The, uh, that's, no, that's up there for me as well. Yeah. Bob sledding is up there for me as well. And, and in general, I, you know, I'm a winter guy, so I enjoy the Winter Olympics more than the Summer Olympics in general. But, man, I, I feel like if I had to choose anything, it might actually be a Summer Olympic sport, and that's surfing. I just love the oh. water. I just I love yeah, the I've water. I've never surfed I've in my swimming. life, and I've never snowboarded in my life. I don't think I'm any yeah. good at them. So. I, so I've only ever bodyboarded before, and, like, I've, I've always wanted to learn to surf. I just, you know, never really have or did. But, like, I can imagine being really good at surfing is the, one of the most amazing, fun things in the world. Like, if you're a good surfer, surfing seems like it's just the biggest high if you love the water like I do. And I just have to imagine it would be incredible. So I think it's surfing for me. But then if you know, we're talking about the Winter Olympics, it's probably either going to be snowboarding or downhill skiing. Anything that gets me into the snow and cold and, you know, anything like that. So probably downhill skiing or snowboarding. But surfing, I think, is number one for me. Yeah, what would my what would my summer uh, sport be? Hmm. Probably, probably swimming. Something something involving swimming, not diving. Yeah. But I, I I enjoyed swimming. I actually was told. I don't know why I never got into swimming in school. Um, mm-hmm. As far as like competitive swimming, uh, I just didn't. Even though I was told I was quite good at it, it just never came up. <laughs> never yeah. went for it. Just never never thought about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd probably go for something 
swimming related. Nice, nice. I have you been watching any of the Olympics? No, I we we haven't really had access. We don't have cable. We don't have Peacock, so it's okay. not been harder to watch them. I've seen some of the highlights. Uh, the, the, well, I say highlights. More of the memes <laughs> that's come uh-huh. out of them. Uh, the of course the uh, the shooting um, sport, like the the poses that these guys are in. Uh, uh-huh. that's quite memorable. Uh, the poor guy who uh did the pole vault and got caught up. <laughs> oh, I didn't actually didn't hear about that. Oh, oh no. Oh no, I didn't oh, hear about that. Heard about this? No. Oh gosh. I've mainly been watching the highlights. Well, so Bissell and I have Peacock through a friend, so we've been watching the highlights, and so we've been watching mainly the the good stuff, not not the foibles. So. You have the uh, pole vault. This guy was yeah. going over the a friend. I believe he's from France. He was going over, doing the pole vault, cleared it, was on his way down, and his pole got in the way. Oh no! I have to walk. It, I'm, I'm it hit. It hit, it hit it, and um, down it went. <laughs> down it went, and oh, now he no. lost that. Lost it out because. <laughs> He was just sticking out a little too far. <laughs> oh no! I think I know exactly what you're talking about, and now I have I have to watch this. I hadn't heard about it. I, I guess I just <laughs> haven't really. We've only been watching uh, the the highlights really, and not I haven't really been following the news about it so much, other than I guess the medals. Um, uh-huh. So yeah, I'll definitely I'll definitely check it out. But uh, I I like I said, we've been watching the highlights, and I cannot get over like S- Simone Biles has to be the single most impressive athlete. I've ever seen in my life. She is, mm. I can't even put into words what a force of nature this woman is and just the, the, the shit she does. It's so scary what? and dangerous, but she is, she does it effortlessly, it feels like, even though it's the obviously. The crazy not thing effort- is, is her age. Isn't she like 24, 28, somewhere around there? <laughs> that is ain't, yeah, ancient. that's ancient f- yeah. for gymnastics. You're used to them being like 16. Yeah, and she's uh, still doing time. it better than anybody else. And, She's she's doing tricks that are named after her because only she has ever been able to do them. She she invented them and only she can do them. She's amazing. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's an, I've not seen them, but it is an incredible uh, which what she's pulled off. Uh, I also heard about the um, Chinese woman who last summer was just incredible. Like, uh, well, diver. I should mention diver. Oh, okay. Um, if you if you've seen this Chinese woman dive. She does amazing tricks and then slips into the water as if she's just slipping into a bath. Really? Like, there's just awesome. no, just no ripples whatsoever. She got a perfect 10. Jeez. Which, if you know this, if you know the score, for those who don't know, the scoring for diving is, uh, I think you get, I want to say it's six scores. Or maybe it's eight scores. And the top two and the bottom two scores are taken out. So the fact she had to get straight tens across the board in order to get a 10. <laughs> I have to see this. Just watching Olympians do what they do is so incredible to me. I can't imagine mm-hmm. being in that, being in, in shape like that perfect shape, right? It's just amazing to think about. Oh, I, I just reminded, I just rem- uh, remembered, I should mention um, that my, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, who I won't name, uh, but uh, his cousin, uh, Hampton Morris, uh, actually won a the bronze medal for weightlifting in Paris. Oh, that's so cool! Yeah, his his cousin won the bronze medal for weightlifting. It's 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 like so it's it's good for him. Uh, that's he, awesome. It, it, according to him, he was in contention for silver. Never really had a shot at gold. Um, but it's two different lifts, and on the uh on the first lift, he put up hundred and twenty six kilograms, which it's over two times his body weight. Um, <laughs> but the guy uh, ahead of him uh, did 143 kilograms, which is nuts. That's uh, then his, yeah. Then his cousin did 172 kilograms, which is two kilograms shy of his world record that he holds on the second left. Um, and, you know, did, did well on that. For his third lift, he tried 176 kilograms, but he couldn't quite manage it. Well, still got bronze, got bronze. 
Well, that's cool. yeah, that's incredible. You know, honestly, though, they're really lucky that Daniel isn't competing because I think we all agree that Daniel, out of all of us, is probably in the best shape by by a significant <laughs> amount. And you know, we all know that Daniel could lift that with with one hand. So they're just lucky that he's not there competing. Yeah, that's yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, no, really amazing stuff. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to miss, I always miss the Olympics once they're gone because I don't really watch a lot of sports, but the Olympics for some reason are just a little bit different to me. And I just enjoy them watch, watching them in a way that I don't regular sports. I think it's cause they're quick bursts. Yeah, yeah. it probably is. Yeah. Um, it's a lot more variety than you typically get. It's like, Oh, right. Do I watch baseball or basketball or football. Right. Um, also completely unrelated to the Olympics, but also very cool. Somnia just reminded us in live audience chat that the new TMNT animated show uh, is out today on Paramount Plus. Oh. It's, it's the one that's the sequel show to Mutant Mayhem. And I, I guess it takes place. Mutant Mayhem. I need oh, to watch it. Dude, that. you got to watch it. It's so good. It's so good, man. You got to. Yeah. And I've uh, heard good things about that, uh, that uh, Shatter or Splinter Dimensions or something like that. that oh, the, Splinter um, State. I've heard Splinter okay State. things about it. Like, I, I've heard it was okay on Apple Arcade, and it's still kind of just okay on, like, I want to play it, but I also don't want to 30, 30 bucks play it, you know? Because I'm on a roguelike. Yeah, that's a, might be a little thing. too much. Yeah. So, the nice thing is, it is a four-player roguelite. That is nice. That is nice. So. I just don't know who I'd play it. Well, you know, I don't think, you know, uh, Bissell is not really into roguelites like I'm not either. So I don't yeah. really know who I'd play it with. True. Fair. But yeah, man, Mutant uh, Mayhem, you got to watch it. And I, yeah, this new series, I guess, takes place in between the movie and the upcoming second movie. So I'm okay. going to be devouring this. Nice. Um, that'll be fun. I hope yeah. it's good. I hope it's good. Me too. Um, otherwise, I think that about covers it for uh, this episode of the GVG cast. Thank you all so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. Uh, always uh, just we love having you here. We love talking for for all of you. We're sorry that we haven't been as consistent. We're gonna we're, we're gonna be fixing that. Uh, just you know, making sure that it all comes together. And uh, of course, we got to give a huge shout out to our patrons at uh, what? Well, all of them, but especially those at the producer tier. Uh, thank you so much for everything that you do. All your support. You really do make this show happen. You make us this this channel possible. So thank you so much for yes. that support. And an extra special thank you to our. Uh, oh no, <laughs> our <laughs> executive producers, yeah. uh, who I forgot to bring up the list for. So let me do that real quick. Oh, I, there I it is. It. Oh, you got him. Okay. I got him. Right I got here. it. Okay. Uh, our executive producers, which includes Brandon Bovia, Fangs, Z Patty, Sky Blue Flames, Eastman 23, Adam O'Sullivan, Richard Herrera, Logan Daniel, The D Pad, Blake, Joy Content, Angel Martinez. Vedron, Joshua Hunter, Benny Yao, Azran127, Black King, Geeky Griffin, Wataniac, Top Dog23100, Young Ben Kenobi, Andrew Medeiros, uh, Darchi, Becca, Essex08, Michael McCall, Matthew Wong, Goron Amber CPHT, Too Much Spaghetti, Bane400, Ascaron809, Rioner, Benji Bear Pup, The Game Orb, Super Gamer Dude 101, Rosa, Rosa Pardo Bowling. Hi, Steve's mom. Uh, Dark Steel 01. Uh, Jason Uloa. Jaden Buck. Cystic Warrior 29. Derek. Colin. Blaystar 25. Twy Lord. Mumbling Yeti. Cameron Sharp. Keel. Hustlebun. Noah Fitterer. Calvin Atkinson. Brainchild. Jim Wakelin. Aramis Baramis. Lord Metarex. Blaze Collard. Eric. Caddy V Person 5. Mega Beatman, True Blue Reviews, Ryan Hanley, Somnia, The Game Jamie, Zombie Joe, and Marathon Max. Thank you all so much for being here. Always appreciate the support. Uh, look forward to episode 100 and no, 112. Well, <laughs> 112. Yep. Sorry. 112 uh, next week. And uh, hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And we will see you next time. Till then, everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody.